Okay, everybody, I want to thank everyone for showing up today. My name is Mario Champion. I'm a product manager um, on the Liquibase team. I want to do some quick introductions to the Liquibase team, and then we will move into our overall agenda. We're going to meet the team. We're going to talk about the product and the roadmap, talk about the community corner. Uh, we'll get into some details on the survey results, and um, we're going to hopefully have a lot of questions and answers. Just so you know, we are looking at the chat log and the questions widget, so feel free to jump in. Uh, let's just get right into meeting some people. Um, you'll see Nathan Foxland, he's the project founder and uh, BDFL, which I believe means Benevolent Dictator for Life. We've got Steve Doney, Robert Reeves, and myself. Let's start with you, Nathan. Um, what makes you excited about Liquibase? Uh, well, I it's it like I say it started it over 13 13 years ago and have been building and maintaining it ever since so you know i'm using um yeah using databases and kind of my day-to-day -day development and um, being able to uh contribute to a open source project has been a great opportunity all right steve how about you all right uh so my background uh i am primarily a software developer been doing this for a long time I uh, was on the uh, Datical DB development team for the past six years so I've been with Datical for over six years and I've recently transitioned to doing more community management stuff so I'm the one answering lots of questions out on the different forums all right and answering questions here today so we yeah. uh, you know, question only... here today yeah all right yeah. and we'll get into the, a little more detail uh, when we get into the community corner uh, Robert Reeves, what have you to say Hi. yourself? <laughs> well, I, thanks for having me. I, I'm, I'm really excited about us starting to uh, do these community outreaches. Uh, th this is what it's really about. Um, I think at the end of the day, um, you know, what makes me really excited is one, to hear about all the great stuff that we've got coming over the, you know, 2020 for Liquibase, but also to start, you know, uh, you know, with with my work with Datical to see that large enterprises are starting to figure out what everybody, uh, you know, that's on this webinar has already figured out. Uh, that that's uh, uh, certainly very heartening, um, <laughs> because at the end of the day, I mean, look, we we don't really uh, make software. I mean, we do, but what we really make and what we offer, uh, to our users and customers is piano recitals, date nights, uh, <laughs> happy hours, all the stuff you want to do, but you're stuck dealing with the stupid database. <laughs> That's true. Uh, and we uh, love to hear what people are doing. We love to hear how they're doing it so that we can make our product fit those needs better, make it easier, give people back their time, which is, I know, a Thing that Robert's always saying. So uh, let's talk a little bit. Some some phrases have been thrown out a bit about uh, Datical and Liquibase. So let's uh, answer that question. What's the deal between Datical and Liquibase? Um, yeah. Hold on one second. And a uh, quick reminder: there is a poll that's going to go up. Um, I'm going to sort of talk over it. And that poll, we just want to get a quick idea of how long people here have been using Liquibase. And while you're thinking about that, I'll tell you about Datical and Liquibase. Datical um, is a company which took a fork of Liquibase and created an enterprise product. And this serves a very specific need, and it serves it really, really well for a lot of people who have quite complex systems. There is Liquibase community, which serves those needs on a much smaller scale. And what we've realized is that we need a product that fits in the middle, and that is Liquibase Pro. Um, there are times when you sort of outgrow what the base community can provide. You need uh, more support, uh, but you don't necessarily need all the power and all of the uh, complexity that really drives Datical DB, which does a lot of things. Um, our poll will be closing in just a moment. Oh, there it goes. That's very quick. <laughs> so it looks like we have about half the people here have been using Datical uh, Liquibase for more than six months. Uh, about a third do not currently use Liquibase, so that's pretty interesting. If any of those people want to throw something in the chat about what brings them to this uh, meetup, that would be great to know. And uh, I guess one out of five have been using it less than six months. So that's yeah, that's some very good, some very good things to know. Well, what's right, so, what's the deal with that twenty-seven percent? 
Uh, they don't. That's what I'm saying. Hopefully, so. what, what, what's the problem? What's the hold up? We 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 like staying at the office. We like being, you know. I mean, maybe maybe they just really don't like hanging out with their family on Thanksgiving, and they want an excuse to leave. <laughs> is that you think that's what it is? Christmas, there's lots of opportunities there. You know, driving kids to baseball games that can take off. Oh yeah, yeah, we don't like that. You know, we we want to be able to punch out of uh, any kind of family event, uh, <laughs> so we can update a database schema. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe it would be super useful for us to know uh, people who don't use Liquibase. Are, are you exploring it? Are you comparing it with other products? Um, what what you know? What is the problem you're trying to solve? And let's see if Liquibase can help you out. Maybe they're committed. Maybe they want to. They just don't know how to get started. Mm -hmm. Steve yeah. Doney would be a perfect uh, resource for that. Um, yeah. You can reach out on Twitter. You can reach out on uh, the subreddit slash uh, r slash Liquibase and those other things, we'll get to those. So let's talk a little bit about Liquibase Pro, just to mention it for a minute. It is this um, middle offering because we've realized and talking with lots of people, um, and we'll get to the survey in a bit, uh, there are some people who need support. They need some capabilities that are not in Liquibase community. Um, and Liquibase Pro is our uh, offering to help them out. So let's just jump into a couple of specific items that, um, we have determined uh, our next one on our roadmap because people ask for them. So the first thing we're releasing, we're very excited about is a targeted rollback. This will be a Liquibase Pro feature. Uh, it allows you to undo a specific chain set or all the chain sets in an update. So there are two versions of this. And you can do these uh, chain set rollbacks uh, targeted, that's the name, without doing all of the changes in reverse order to get to the one that you want. So uh, let me know in the chat um, if you have a question about that. I'm going to go into a little more detail, but if you want some more detail, I'm happy to go into it. So there's two versions, rollback one chain set, and you can think of it as a git cherry pick for rollbacks. Um, it's exactly like that. I have a lot of rollbacks uh, or a lot of chain sets, and the one I need to get to is 37 chain sets ago, and I don't want to undo the 36 between this one and that one. <laughs> it happens. Uh, rollback one update is uh, an ability to undo all the chain sets. It's an easy way to select all the chain sets from an update. By default, you can just do your last update. That's probably the most common use case while you're in development. But occasionally, you might need to specify an update from any point in time. You can go grab its deployment ID and pass that into the command, and you'll be able to undo those chain sets. We're very excited about that. If you have questions about that, feel free to reach out in the chat. Um, Additionally to that, we're coming up with a multi-platform installer. This is both for community and pro. Uh, in doing surveys and talking with people, we realize that, yes, you do kind of have to piece the Liquibase environment together. You have to go get um, some drivers. You have to get a database if you just want to experiment. you got to build up a change log. So we decided we'll make that very easy. You'll download the installer, give it a couple of clicks, pick a path or choose the default, and you'll be ready to up and run and try Liquibase uh, community and pro uh, just like that so there's 27 percent of you on this webinar who haven't tried it yet um look for this in literally about the next 10 days though i'm sure some people will say don't, don't give them the timeline the other thing we're doing which is very much a community driven effort is that we need to make our master branch master again uh, we are aware that we build and test against um, a 38x branch and not really the master branch but people out the community uh like to create issues and do pull requests uh, and test against a branch that is not our active branch. And we need to fix this. And we are working on fixing this. Um, Steve or Nathan, do you want to jump in real quick on sort of set a tentative uh, outline of how this is going? Sure. So um, so when we decided to do Liquibase Pro, uh, we decided to base uh, release a 3.8.0 version. Um, and Based that off of the previous 3.7 version, which uh, we've, we've done some changes. Um, we've been working on some larger refactorings that are going to come out in a 3.9.0 when we get back to master. Um, and we recognize that there's just a lot of pull requests, there's a lot of demand out there. And we're, as we dedicate more resources to Liquibase, we are trying to. Uh, develop the processes for dealing with that so that we have people inside Datacle working on Liquibase, people outside uh, in the community working on Liquibase, and just figuring out how we work with 
GitHub issues and pull requests and make sure that uh, in the past pull requests were kind of pulled in uh, as Nathan saw fit and he did all the testing and he did everything pretty much. Um, and right now we're trying to, we're scaling up the, the team. We have testers, we have product managers, we have uh, documentation people and uh, just working on getting all of those things in place so that when we do a pull request, we know how to test it and make sure that when it goes out that it meets everybody's needs. So mm -hmm. there's kind of a broad outline of that. Yeah. Uh, and I think the important thing to know is that we are aware that we need to get better at this and we are working, we are devoting resources in the team um, and uh, tapping people in the community to help make this uh, process smoother and uh, effective so that we can all see the value, you know, because it is a little bit of a drag to uh, file an issue or uh, create some code and uh, have it sort of sit in limbo for a while. So we are aware of that and we are making progress. It's it's on the immediate roadmap. It's, it's actually an item we're working on today. So. Um, so let's move in a little bit. Um, I don't see any questions yet in the chat or um, around things around the roadmap. So we'll just go move along and save a lot of time at the end for public kind of Q&A. Um, this will be largely Steve and Nathan. Uh, we have uh, these two superstars within Liquibase. They know a lot about Liquibase and how the community works. So take it away. Nathan, you want to go first? Yeah, so uh, again, uh, my new role in the past uh, two months or so has been community manager. Um, it's something that I've worked on. Uh, when I first started at Datical, I knew a little bit about Liquibase, but not a lot. And in order to uh, teach myself to get better, I started monitoring Stack Overflow and answering questions on Stack Overflow. Um, so I'm very active there. Uh, active in the Liquibase forums, both the user forum and the developer forum. Uh, we've recently kind of resurrected the uh, Liquibase subreddit. And so I'm uh, being more active there and, and in uh, other things like the DevOps subreddit and things like that. Uh, monitoring Twitter, we actually uh, have purchased a, a tool here at Datical to monitor the, the web at large and looking for people monitor, mentioning liquid base or liquid base as lots of people call it. <laughs> um, people talking about database schema migration in general, uh, trying to uh, make sure that we are helping people out with their questions. Um, so that's my role. I, my, I see myself as the voice of the community in Datical. So uh, please reach out to me. Uh, like I said, on Twitter, I am at Steve Doney and uh, or on Stack Overflow, if you have a specific Stack Overflow-like question, uh, Liquibase subreddit, if you have a more general conversational sort of thing that you'd like to ask about, uh, and I will be there to help you out. Yeah, I, I just want to underscore that and just say, look, if you're having a problem with Liquibase, uh, make that problem Steve's problem. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and he'll he, he will certainly help out. And if it's something that we need to change, um, then uh, if it's a, a feature request or something like that, um, then Steve's going to advocate for that internally. Um, and so giving him as much information as possible, uh, certainly areas where you've seen it maybe outside of your problem area, like you have a colleague that has a problem, uh, that's really helpful as well. So, so again, make your problem Steve's problem, and he'll make it go away. <laughs> Nathan. Oh, there we go. Um, all right, first I wanted to kind of start out with a shout out to, it looked like um, uh, Ben on the call here has maybe been yeah, using Liquibase for closer to 10 years. Uh, so it's great to see some real old timers, old timers <laughs> like me on the project. Um, so great, great to hear it's it's been working with you, working for you for so long. Um, uh, so yeah, like I said earlier, I you know started Liquibase, you know, long time ago and I've been working on building and maintaining it. Uh, my, my role going forward um, is I'm going to still continue to be involved in all of these areas of Liquibase. You know, I'm still doing the design and architecture, you know, still doing development, documentation, you know, helping with support and community. Uh, but now I have a whole team to work with me on it um, so that we can do, you know, we as a team can do all of those things better. Um, so a big part of my role right now is kind of helping spreading that knowledge and experience that I've 
gained over the years to the team as a whole as we as we scale that out. Um, and so, you know, I'm still still going to be doing all of the things that I've been doing in the past, uh, but now with uh, more people to help me out. Hmm. Yeah, so well put. And you know, just to you know, uh, Nathan has his uh, some fingers in product, has some fingers in development, has some fingers in test, and certainly doc writing, uh, community engagement. So. For uh, fans of Nathan, he's not uh, gone anywhere. He may be not be the one pulling your requests, but uh, there are there are people doing that, so that's better. And uh, it's, nice, it's nice, nice to not be the bottleneck for all of that stuff anymore. <laughs> but it was a great bottleneck. It was that, wonderful. The the best bottleneck. It's yeah, a finely always... aged bottleneck. Yeah. And uh, Robert, uh, you know, I throw to you, like, so you come from the datical side, but there's a lot of experience that overlaps. You know, how do how do you feel uh, you can help out Liquibase? Well, look, it, it is um, at the end of the day, my job is to advocate um, for internally to our with our prospects and customers of Datical. Uh, that they really need to automate database schema migrations. Uh, it's 2020, yo. I mean, it, 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 it's, mm, uh, we can't be doing this manually. We can't like uh, be treating, uh, you know, a SQL script like it's, you know, bespoke artisanal beard oil. You know, <laughs> it's, you know, it's like, uh, uh, you know, it's not a $6 cup of coffee. I mean, come on, let's just change it. Let's get down the road. And so helping those larger organizations uh, understand uh, the value of this. Um, mm -hmm. I look at the community as a way for me to learn. Uh, and there are best practices that are coming out of this open source community that frankly, the largest companies in the world need to learn as well. And so as I'm learning those, I'm making certain that uh, those learnings are passed on uh, to those folks so that uh, whether our bank, or our insurance company or you know logistics companies uh they they catch wise as well so uh i look at the community as certainly a way of for me to learn and mm -hmm. see best practices and help apply those to larger companies mm -hmm. yeah. yeah thanks for that and because it is true i mean we have people using datical and liquibase in the same organization because it is sometimes the case that a dev team in a thousand plus company does not need the power of datical they need the power of automation and sure. migration management. And sometimes it shifts and sometimes people move from one to the other. Uh, and that's that's a valuable thing that we've learned um, as well. Um, and the way we've learned that is uh, going back to 2007. This is a slide I forgot to show whenever Nathan was talking about when he started uh, Liquibase. So just as a reminder, 2007 was a long time ago and this is, this is what the world looked like in part. Uh, <laughs> So we're, uh, we're going to jump into how we know some of the things we know um, and realize that there are lots of things we don't know. But, so we just ran a survey. Many of you might be aware. Um, the findings are available out at the Liquibase blog. You just go to liquibase.org and uh, find it there. Uh, there was a lot of value in the survey. One of the things that maybe took us a little by surprise, at least some of us, is that it's essentially a 10 to 1 ratio of uh, developers to DBAs using Liquibase. And I guess it's not terribly surprising, but it is good to know that that ratio is that high and that the needs that we solve, we solve for developers uh, right now. We also solve other needs, uh, but that a, a 10 to 1 ratio is a, a thing that we need to keep in mind as we shape this product. Uh, another thing is that um, while there are people in giant companies uh, percentage wise, if you add up those 1 to 10, 11, 15, 51 to 100 bars, uh, slightly more people work at companies less than 100 than work at companies greater than 1,000. Um, so it's a variety of people, wildly diverse uh, sizes. They have different workflows. You know, we've, I've been interviewing them. If you're a person who took the survey you, uh, and opted for it, you've got a, uh, an email and or a call from me and we talked. I don't know if any of these people are on the call right now, but it's been super fascinating to find out how people really use the, really use the tool. Uh, a little bit of a surprise, command line, Maven, uh, then custom, scripts uh, are the primary ways people use uh, Liquibase. Uh, Spring Boot going up there, Ant falling a little bit behind. Ant's hanging on. <laughs> hanging <laughs> on. <laughs> it's, it's, it's got that grip. Uh, the other thing that we learned, or one of the other things that we learned that was very useful to us is that when you combine MySQL and MariaDB, it actually beats out SQL Server. MySQL by itself beats out SQL Server. We knew that there are a lot of people 
use liquid base with MySQL. We did not know it was so high. Uh, and, and this shapes our test efforts. This shapes our development efforts. Uh, this shapes where we're going to focus uh, our intentions because we need to serve the people who are, who are here. Another learning that uh, was a topic of debate, uh, and it would be interesting if someone wants to throw into the chat, uh, if they are like a, a, a YAML user or a JSON user, um, SQL is more popular than XML. XML within a cohort of people who write especially tools that they use across different organizations, uh, pretty high. But SQL is the preferred method uh, for authoring database scripts. A little surprising, maybe not, but this is, this is also shaping our roadmap. Jenkins, out and out winner, um, definitely shaping our roadmap. If you check in at our liquid base, you'll see we've been polling people and asking how they would like to see a new Jenkins plugin shaped. Uh, what, what are the ways that they use it? What are the things that they've learned? We want to, you know, to Robert's point, learn from the community. There are more people outside this building than inside this building. Um, the team can extend out into the community, and we uh, do not know everything that everyone else knows. So please let us know. This question, uh, not terribly surprising, actually. This comes up in surveys. People want to know uh, topics around liquid base. They want to know uh, how to match their deployments among the tenants on their multi-tenant setup. They want to know how to match deployments across their environment. They want to know what's been deployed across multiple projects. Um, so we are investing heavily in a centralized dashboard. Um, can't give any dates yet, but it is coming. And um, it was coming before the survey because we had already surveyed a bit, uh, but it is good to know to validate. Oh, come it. on, be cool. Put a <laughs> date out, man. Come on. Come on. Uh, when, when's your birthday, Robert? We'll make it that. Uh, too far out. December. <laughs> <laughs> too far. All right. Well, it'll be before Robert's birthday. He'll get uh, release V2. That was an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so uh, yeah, so our survey uh, taught us a lot and um, really, um, you know, helps really shape our uh, experiences about how we want our roadmap to go. And even though this survey is closed, we'll be launching a new one um, to just put it out there again, reaching out to Nathan or Doni direct or using one of the channels, one of the social media channels is a great way for us to learn more. And we are actually always happy to engage in those kinds of conversations. Um, since I don't see anything in the chat real quick, I am going to move on to our Q&A. Uh, so I see a couple of questions in the questions widget. Um, uh, Steve, do you uh, want to take any of these questions? Do you well, it's more uh, comments and questions right now. So looking for better, you know, more questiony questions. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, ben, I, like I said, Ben, we're glad to have you on board and using the tool for such a long time. You know that there are a lot of long-term users. Uh, yeah. We saw that in our survey as well. Um, and then uh, also yeah. from ben, a little support for the uh, XML. Uh, would love to see, uh, sounds like he's using an XML aware editor, uh, which would validate things using the schema. And uh, yeah, well, let's let's move on. There are a couple of other questions such as the, uh, can I use liquid base with Git? Um, and this come up, this actually came up in the survey as well, um, but I don't know who put this question in, but yeah. who's got an answer there, Steve or Nathan? I'll go ahead. I seem to be the question answering one today. <laughs> So yeah, uh, as far as source control goes, uh, a lot of, especially with people that are new to Liquibase, uh, wonder about that. Yes, uh, all of the source files basically that Liquibase uses, whether it's XML or SQL or YAML or JSON or whatever, are all just plain text files um, and work very well with source control. So. Uh, we see people using it with Git, with SVN, with CVS, uh, if you're that into the, the, the <laughs> real old school stuff. Uh, TFS is a, a big one that we see a lot. Um, so, yep, all of those things. Uh, and then you get past source control into things like uh, people using it for in their tests. Yep, Liquibase works great if you need to test your uh, database change management uh, as you're making changes. 
integrate well, into uh, and Steve, Steve, I'd really like, I mean, look, I think, look, get uh, subversion, bless your heart, clear case, whatever. Just <laughs> if you are putting your code in source code control, and you are, you need to put these files in there as well. But I think once it goes through the CI tool, once some artifact, your application pops out as a binary, jar file, whatever, um, yeah, you need to put that in some kind of artifact repository. And I would like to see uh, your liquid-based project go there as well, uh, because you want to keep them in alignment. You want to keep the application, uh, the code changes, application code changes, and database code changes in alignment. So if you check them into the same release branch, same repository, that's a good thing. But an even better thing, as that artifact goes out, realize that database changes, that, that's an artifact as well. That, that's the single source of the truth. And as that progresses through your uh, release cycle, dev tests, all, you know, prod minus one, prod, whatever, uh, the same mechanism that you deploy the app and update the database schema should be used in dev and test and all those other environments. So there's no surprises. You get to a point where you eventually schedule releases. Uh, and that is a good thing. Nobody wakes up at three in the morning anymore. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I wrote a blog post several years ago that was uh, the topic was things I will not work without anymore. <laughs> I remember back in the day working on software without source control. Mm -hmm. I won't do that anymore. I remember. I'm sorry. Sorry for your loss, sir. <laughs> yeah. I remember working uh, without continuous integration, and I won't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember working without tests, and I won't do that anymore. And I I remember working without database change automation. And if I'm working on a project and it touches a database, I won't do that unless there's automation in place. So early and often, early yeah, and often. Absolutely goes back to the the original you know uh, Martin Fowler continuous integration idea. The the more often you do it, the easier it is. Well, and this goes back to, you know, uh, and I forget um, her name, the Admiral, who this is attributed to, but uh, ships are safer in port, yeah. but they're not made to be in port. Um, right. And so there's a reason why uh, the U.S. Navy and, and all the military branches always do constant drilling so yeah. that when they need to do it for real, uh, there's muscle memory. And, and you should do the same thing with your deployments. Uh, you are always going to, um, uh, if, if you are deploying the same way over and over again, uh, it's much easier to do it uh, faster and better than if you do it once a quarter. And, and by integrating this with the release it's process. Manual process. That some Maybe you have a checklist written down. Maybe you don't. Yeah. Well, I say get rid of the checklist, just automate the whole stuff and just hit a button, hit a button or have something else, some trigger hit that button. Yep. And life just gets a lot easier, man. Just yep. a lot easier. All right. Yeah. We have another broad question here uh, from Brian Chung. Brian says that they are a small company trying to automate database upgrades, but the materials and examples are mostly about very simple database upgrades. Yeah, you have to kind of look outside of uh, some of our documentation to find more complex examples. Um, you're using multiple databases, and then yeah, you've got the the inertia, devs and DBAs that don't want to, <laughs> um, and that's a hard one. A lot of this is cultural change in a company, and uh, that's always a difficult problem, no matter what kind of cultural change you're trying to make inside a company. Yeah, um, and it, but what we have found most useful it is, is, it is possible. Letting it people is. experience the pain more. Yeah, yeah. there is, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, look, there's two things you need to do here uh, when you want to bring change into an organization. Um, there is going to be a small percentage of folks that don't want to change. There's going to be a small percentage of folks that do want to change. And then a bunch in the middle, they're just going to kind of see how this works out. 
And um, my recommendation would be to uh, reward the folks that change. And it's going to be clear as day uh, for the folks in the middle. And, and the folks, the laggards, are going to catch up. So, for example, if you want to automate database change with Liquibase in your organization, find a group that wants to do it and snap the chalk line. Figure out how long it's taking to do a release today, uh, its impact on the business, um, certainly its impact on the individuals, and document it. And then automate the change. And then measure the change. So we're getting out, we were getting out one release a week, and now we're getting it out daily. Um, we um, were on 18 hour bridge calls on the weekend uh, to oversee this release. Now those are gone. And we're able to go to, you know, happy hours and all that other good stuff. Then you tell people about it. You share that value. So for you as an individual, as an agent of change, the value for you is that you get a lot more notoriety in the organization for affecting a positive change. Uh, and that's a good thing. That means promotions, that means bonuses, those sorts of things. But also it shows to the folks in the middle and those laggards that, hey, you might be missing out on something. And so for humans, we don't like change. Um, and there has to be a really good reason. So always think in terms of with them, what's in it for me? Uh, what is that person going to get it? Um, and, and, you know, that, that's how you make change. It's hard, it's difficult, but there is a pot of gold at the end of that rainbow. And it is certainly true, um, I just wanna thin that and say 100%, and it is certainly true, we've seen case after case after case where, especially in large companies, uh, where not surprisingly, a lot of people are, they might not have the startup mentality, like we'll break it, that's fine, and we'll move on. Uh, but we've seen large companies, uh, small teams, uh, do exactly what Robert is, is explaining. They, a little bit of piece that can be automated, that can be set up with Liquibase. They do it as a POC, as a proof of concept. Um, it works. They document that work, and they share it with the rest of the team, and it is automatic. Uh, essentially, the people want to do what's best for themselves, and when they see that this other team is saving time, and uh, the higher-ups see that it's saving money, it really, uh, it, it just spreads. Um, Nathan, do you have anything to add to that before we go? To yeah, I was just, just going to add, um, you know, that, yeah, I think that we, we definitely need to be able to kind of improve some of our documentation around mm -hmm. some of these more complicated use cases. Um, you know, part of what I had done in the past was, um, you know, Liquibase has a lot of features and options that, you know, can be put together in all sorts of different ways. We have a lot of tools in the toolbox that you that people can use to solve their problems. And there's sort of a almost infinite number of problems people have. And so a lot of the documentation kind of tended to be around, you know, well, we have this tool, you know, we have this piece, we have this piece, we have this piece, we have this piece, without so much of a, a holistic thing. So like, um, you know, part of the question was kind of asking about, um, you know, some people are worried about, um, you know, data changes that might have occurred during, uh, you know, sort of since the last upgrade, you know, well, you know, there, you know, Liquibase has some functionality around being able to say define preconditions before a change set execute. So if, you know, there is specific data that people are worried about before another update can happen, you know, if you have a, you know, say you have a change, um, you know, you have a change set defined that, you know, drops a table, you can have a precondition in there saying, you know, check to see if there's any data in that table. And if there is, you know, stop, you know, don't, um, don't deploy that table or don't drop that table, you know, or, you know, you can have, um, you know, there's, there's, you know, really a very large amount of flexibility and, um, yeah, kind of tools on the liquid base side. And so, you know, if you have, you know, sort of specific issues that you're looking for, definitely reach out to us and we can kind of help you with um, knowing kind of which of those tools you can do. Um, you know, I've always tried to build a lot of that flexibility into Liquibase. Um, I kind of took the sort of C route of you can do whatever you need to do with Liquibase. It's going to let you do it. Um, we don't want to stop, stop, stand in your way of, you know, you being able to automate your deployments. Um, and so, you know, I think there's, there's ways to be able to kind of work through, um, you know, any arbitrarily complex deployment. Um, it's, it, I, I, it is definitely sometimes, you know, hard to maybe find, too hard to find those, some of those pieces and we're improving some of that docs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and whenever we get a question, uh, we're gonna, one, answer it. 
uh, well, when Steve gets a question, you know, <laughs> he's going to answer it. And then yeah. um, <clears throat> we're going to document that, make sure that other people can benefit from it as well, because that is the open source way. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, you listen to the community. Oh, they have a problem. Let's fix the problem and then make certain, uh, you know, it's out there for people to find. Yeah. Well, well let's, uh, in that spirit, let's answer another question. I see uh, a question about, can I exclude objects when generating a change log? It's a very specific kind of support question. Okay. Uh, yes, absolutely. During, uh, any kind of diff operation, which includes generate change log or diff change log or diff, uh, you can add a flag to include or exclude objects on a fairly, you can be very coarse grained and say, I don't care anything about tables or I don't care anything about procedures and exclude those. Um, or you can say, uh, exclude uh, all the tables whose name starts with uh, sys underscore, something like that. Um, and I think that's that it is documented. Might be an area that uh, if people are asking that question, indicates that we could probably do a better job on that. Yeah, and Nathan, can you exclude just say stored logic? Do you do you happen to remember? I do not remember. Yes. All the time. yes. Yep. Yep. You can specify specific types that you'd want to exclude. Uh, like you can say, yeah, don't don't ex exclude the um, uh, yeah, sorry, ex exclude um, yeah, the stored logic, exclude functions, exclude triggers, you know, exclude um, foreign keys, you know, as a as a category, or you can say, you know, exclude this specific one. Um, there's also an include um, if you want to go the other way, if you'd rather sort of whitelist things rather than blacklisting things. Um, so you're able to say, you know, basically only snapshot this object or only snapshot, you know, tables and indexes or, you know, only snapshot, you know, these five objects um, so that we do have kind of both of those routes that you can do uh, for controlling uh, what to uh, what to diff or what to snapshot. So if you're trying to cherry pick a table that you created. Uh, and you don't want the entire schema, you just give me this table because it's new and I want to use this for a net new change set. Yep. White listing is what you would do. Yep, yep, mm -hmm. exactly. And, and what's the use case for the 27% who do not use Liquibase? What's the use case for excluding objects? Um, usually it would be if there's, you know, if you're using it, so, yeah, there's there's a bunch of use cases, you know, so one would be like maybe you have a third party tool that is automatically, you know, creating tables or creating objects in your database and, you know, you're not wanting to care about those, you know, so you mm -hmm. want to sort of exclude those things, you know, maybe it's the database that's doing it, maybe it's the, um, yeah, just, just something else that you have that Liquibase is well, bringing back and you want to just automatically ignore. Yeah, for example, uh, one I could think of is Oracle Autonomous Database. If it's going to be applying indices and those sorts of things automatically for you, um, you, you don't need to worry about that anymore. You, so you shouldn't have indexes in your uh, Liquibase change log because Autonomous Database is going to take care of it for you. Um, so you would want to exclude those. Um, so you just because they could be there today, they might disappear tomorrow. If for performance reasons, you don't need them, so you don't need to worry about indices. That's one example. Okay, um, Steve, do you have any uh, other common use cases for either include or exclude? Um, again, I think it's things where uh, if you are customizing a uh, some sort of software package that has a database. You you know, if you had, I'm trying to think of one that uh, I've seen, um, but like there's like, this is not a, a good good example probably, but if you were customizing uh, something like JIRA, you had JIRA on site and JIRA itself manages 99% of the tables and the database structure for you, but you've done some heavy duty customization and you've got uh, some of your own stuff mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that you're only looking at your part of the schema and not theirs. Uh, I could also see this being used if you've got say uh, four or five applications in a, in a company and they all share the same database. Today. 
Yeah, and he can and, fix that. <laughs> that all the time. And, and you know, maybe they should have put it into separate schemas, but it wasn't designed that way in the beginning. And so you've got, you know, tables that are logically unrelated. Mm -hmm. uh, the the user app uh, needs to know about these five tables, and the uh, billing app needs to know about these eight tables. And so you might uh, have uh, change logs for each of the different applications that are all touching the same database and they each have their own database change log tracking table in that database and uh, you want to keep those separate that would be one way uh, you could mm -hmm. attack a problem like that is using the include and exclude mm -hmm. and that, that's actually a good segue i'd be remiss as a product manager to not bring up targeted rollback because it's for exactly that sort of case as well you will have parts of your schema that um, essentially are independent and you might have a localization table and a user's table and a product table. And you might, you know, 57 change sets after you've been touching your user's table realize you need to go back and you don't want to undo all of them. So, uh, which, which, you know, is not something you want to do on a regular basis, but it's one of those things that when you need it, you need it. Um, so, uh, yeah, all right, so that's good. Um, all right, let's uh, check some other questions. And don't forget, people, if you feel like throwing something into the question or chat, um, we're happy to talk about it. I see another question uh, asking, is there a way to get a UI to help me understand my operations? Uh, so I'll take that one a little bit. There is not currently a UI, though that uh, gets to our centralized dashboard question that was on the roadmap and uh, rated very highly on the survey. Um, from talking with people, and I would be interested to hear anyone on this uh, webinar thinks or in this meetup thinks, and uh, talking with people, it seems to be mostly around my deployment status and deployment monitoring. Um, so I don't know what this person's, what, what they hope to get out of this UI, but certainly people tend to want to know what has been deployed and when. And you can do that by looking through your database change log table, but that's not a terribly friendly experience. Um, the other thing that seems to come up a bit is around multi tenancy. Um, and you can sort of expand that as well to just across environments. People want to know how to map a deployment or an update and all of the change that's in it, let's call that one deployment, uh, across these tenants um, or across these environments. Um, those seem to be the most obvious cases. Um, uh, Nathan or Steve or Robert, have you all talked with anybody who has other cases? I know I've done most of the interviewing in those cases, but. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when we can talk about you know the the user interfaces that we've added to Datical and how people have enjoyed those things. So, um, you know, Datical has added a, a UI that allows you to have a, a project, and Liquibase doesn't really have the concept of a project per se and multiple environments. It's something again that you kind of have to put together yourself, um, and we give you a lot of flexibility in doing that, but it means you have to figure it out. Um, so that could be something in the future. Uh, we also, you know, along with defining a project, we can, you know, you can look at the status of multiple environments at 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 one time in our UI. Um, the other thing that uh, kind of a, I don't know, some people seem to use it, some like it, some don't. Uh, the Datical uh, user interface has what we call the change set wizard, which looks at your existing change log um, and then kind of simulates having that database. And then uh, when you decide that you want to create a new table or, or alter a table or something like that, it walks you through a, a wizard uh, so that you don't have to edit the XML by hand. Mm -hmm. I had a coworker once who said that XML is great. It's like lye soap, super powerful, but you don't really want to touch it with your hands. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that might sum up some bit of liquidation generally. It's very powerful. Uh, if, <laughs> if you want, if you can automate it better, uh, don't want to get too yeah, you into it. Hey, you tell liquidation to drop a table, it's going to drop a table. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, you know. All right, um, let me uh, scroll through these questions real quick. Um, you know, uh, so there's a question. Um, I'm not sure exactly what they're getting at, but um, they're asking about updating uh, change sets 
but but not at the tag level. So maybe Nathan, you can explain what tags are. Well, actually, maybe for those who don't know, um, there are various parameters that you can add to a chain set. Um, can you walk through those real quick and maybe hit what a tag is and what it's good for? Sure. You said uh, attributes to the chain set first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and since there's kind of enough people, it's maybe more or that are haven't used Liquid Base, we can kind of talk through just a yeah, chain set uh, for a second here. Uh, basically, sure. what Liquid Base does is it it wraps. A you know, it sort of wraps the changes that you want to make into what's called a, a change set. And that's our sort of uniquely identifiable piece of, you know, this thing has been applied or this thing has not been applied. Um, you know, there it's basically defined by, you know, an ID and an author attribute that you put on the change set in your, you know, XML or SQL or, you know, whatever format change log you have. Um, and it's that ID and author that that uniquely identify it. We use both ID and author um, together. You know, the author's there less to kind of try to track people and more um, to make it easy for multiple developers working on the same file to be able to add add to that changelog file without worrying about trying to have to coordinate their ID naming schemes and whatever, you know, they, you can just go, you know, ID one, two, three, four. And if, you know, somebody else in a different branch happened to be adding, you know, change set four at the same time that you did, you know, the, the fact that they're different authors is going to keep them unique. Um, and so that's, that's why we kind of track it that way. Um, so, you know, it's that, that change set level that local base is, is tracking, you know, what's been deployed, what hasn't been. Um, tagging is a, um, feature that allows you to um, just basically kind of mark the state of the database at a, at a current point in time. Um, it works a lot like version control tagging. You know, if you are using Git or, or whatever, you know, you, you're up to a certain commit, you want to just kind of give a nice, you know, sort of human readable name to that commit ID rather, you know, that you can refer back to it in, in future times. Um, and so that's what the, the tagging does in Liquibase. It's kind of a um, there's a liquid base tag command that you do. So after you've done your update command, which you know applies all of the unrun chain sets, um, you can run liquid base tag and it will just sort of mark the current spot in your database with that um, tag that you gave it. Um, and you know with that tag, once it's been tagged, um, you're able to do things like rollback to that tag um, uh, is kind of the, the main use which you would, that you'd use that tag for. Just like um, you know inversion control after you've tagged, you know your 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 particular commit. You might want to revert back to that tag. Um, that's that's kind of what the tag ends up being used for. Mm -hmm. So, and commonly, do people tag around a release, around the sort of feature set? Yeah, yep. Yeah, it's it's probably going to depend on you know kind of where you are along the pipeline. Um, on the de developer side, you know, usually the workflow is you know you have your own local database. Um, you are um, you know, you're, you're trying to make your changes that you need to do to get the, your code that you're currently working on to match the, you know, database schema. And so, um, you know, it, you may want to tag your database, um, you know, before you start making some changes um, that your suspicious might have to be rolled back. So you can roll back to it. You know, the tag, does, you know, it's, it's the database that you're tagging. It's not the change log file. So it doesn't live anywhere out, you know, so it's just kind of, you know, points along the way that you can go back and see, you know, kind of where, you, you know, you know, it's, yeah, it's just kind of points along your history that you can go back to look at. Um, as you get to, you know, production, staging, QA, kind of more shared environments, um, at that point, tagging is maybe more useful as a um, around just kind of releases. Um, you know, if you have a Jenkins job or a, um, you know, some sort of other automation to deploy to those environments, uh, you may want to just automatically do a liquid base tag command after you do a liquid base update, um, just so that you have a tag in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just like you know when you do a um, a release from your application, it's it's a good practice to tag your version control system at that point, um, just to be able to just kind of see what it is for future reference. All right, um, we are going to do one more question, and then we are going to wrap up. I want to thank everyone for showing up and uh, contributing. Uh, this question, Steve, do you want to take it from Sherrod? Sure. Uh, so the, the question is, uh, during an upgrade, is there any way to continue execution for some certain error codes? Uh, the example here is if you have a drop table uh, and, you, and the table doesn't exist, then the database might give you an error and you might want to say, well, 
my goal was for that table to not be there, and that is in fact the case. But the table is not there, uh, so I would like to continue on and say, yep, that uh, that change set has effectively been applied. So go ahead and mark it as applied and, and keep going. Um, there's not a way to kind of to just say ignore that error. What uh, we would probably recommend is that. Uh, if you know that there might be environments where that could happen, uh, that you uh, put a precondition on that change set. And there's preconditions to say, hey, don't, uh, before you run this change set, check this, whatever the condition is. And there's one for table exists and there's one for table doesn't exist. And if that uh, condition comes back as uh, as true, then go ahead and mark this change set as executed and move on. So that would be the but, way to handle that. So, but it, it, Steve, in my mind though, I, I want to ask why the hell isn't it? that table there? I mean, who <laughs> zapped well, it? Because somebody's been monkeying around with that environment without using Liquibase. Right, and, 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 and it's part of the cultural change that you have to work on in a company. It's like, hey. Uh, we see it all the time, you know, don't don't SSH into the production server anymore. <laughs> well, there's an easy way to stop that, change the password. Uh, right. th that goes away. But I, I, I and... what, one thing I've seen a lot of is that, uh, you know, look, if you you really need to provide, um, you know, uh, uh, individual te dev and test environments. Uh, this typically happens when you have a shared test environment or dev integration or something like that, where a um, variety of teams are using the same hardware. It actually it physically exists. And so what I would uh, have the listeners, the, the attendees consider is how do we move to virtualize environments, not just for the app, but also for the database. Uh, we, we certainly like what our friends at Delphix do with uh, virtualized databases. They have recently released an open source project called Titan, titan-data.io. And think of it as Git for databases. You will, you know, Titan clones some URL, pulls down the data file, attaches a Docker container with that you know, database version runtime installed. Um, and you have, hey, look, I, I have a Docker container running with my data set. It has my data, my structure. Uh, and of course, if it does that, it's also gonna get the database change log table that Liquibase needs. Uh, so yeah, what Steve was saying is correct. That's how you solve this problem. But part of DevOps is saying, okay, I've solved the problem, I've mitigated it. How do we make sure this doesn't happen again? Are we uh, encouraging naughty behavior, or are we actually improving the organization? Uh, are we, you know, uh, uh, it, it's is it a symptom or is it a cause of the disease that we're trying to cure here? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, on that note, <laughs> not the note of disease necessarily. Uh, let's 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 wrap up. Um, so for those who've been here, thank you very much for your questions. Um, this conversation can continue online. There are several different channels. Um, if you have general questions, uh, the subreddit is a great place. If you have specific questions, sort of more of the support variety, uh, make sure to tag your questions with Liquibase when you go to Stack Overflow. That's, that's what we scrape, that's what we check, uh, because there's just a lot of things there. Uh, if you have general comments and uh, issues or just want to throw out an idea, Twitter is great if you can squeeze it down um, to not too many characters. Um, and speaking of Twitter, our handle, which is not on the screen, is at Liquibase. Oh, no, there it is, at there Liquibase. Is. Uh, we have a Twitter poll going right now. You can help pick the topic for this next meeting. Um, our next meetup will be in a little less than a month, February 13th. 2020. You don't have to bring us Valentine's gifts, but we wouldn't turn them away. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't turn them down. Um, and yeah, I think that's going to wrap us up. Uh, this will be available on social media. Um, I'm not sure exactly where, but uh, you will get a notification about that. We've got all the channels. It'll go on the various ones. 
Um, and with that, I want to say thanks for showing up. I want to thank uh, all the panelists and all the attendees. So thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Robert, uh, for all your commentary and uh, your sharing of knowledge. Uh, we will keep that up. Um, all right. With that, thanks, everyone. See you all. Thanks.